Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So I wasn't planning to record a video today but then um, I wasn't aware of the fact that Flow was going to release such awesome functionality today. So I, I noticed this this morning and I decided to continue with this on our uh, Smiles with Files on Flow video and then to basically show you guys what's new in Flow or well I don't know everything but um, I'm sure this is only tip of the iceberg but essentially what I'm going to do is open up our existing Flow and today we're going to be doing two things first of all we're going to check for an API key with this Flow so we're actually going to build in um, a new header parameter so we're not only going to check for the attachment size we're also going to make sure that whoever is connecting to this API is authorized to do so. So we can just build in a small little API key in that. So I'm opening up the flow that we started with previously in the series where we're uploading an, a file through an HTTP request and then we're doing some, some stuff to get to the attachment and then to go and check the size and so on and so forth. But we were going to focus on today, and this is the first thing that Flow now released, one of the f new changes that Flow released, is the fact that the condition can now have multiple comparisons, so or multiple operators. So if we're having a look at this condition over here, um, this is the old one in the existing Flow, and you'll see that there's only ever one. You can only check one thing at a time. Now that forced us to do um, quite a bit of um, nested flows in the past or multiple checks and so on and so forth. So I'm very happy with what Flow has released on this, what Microsoft has released on this. And we can actually go into the same condition and check multiple things. So first of all, if I open up the existing condition, you'll see that it's nothing new. It's still the same thing. Um, and understand why Flow is not just simply upgrading all of the the, the conditions. Uh, you actually have to create a new condition at this stage um, in order to make use of that functionality. So I don't know if they're planning to change that in the future, whether they are planning to update all of the old conditions, but for now you actually have to add a new condition. Look at that thing of beauty. So you'll see that this is the old one at the top and there you can only add one where at the bottom you can have multiple conditions and this is beautiful and um, this is really really awesome stuff so first thing let's go and change our old condition to the new one so in the old condition I, we simply said that if the attachment size which is what we got from this variable at the top over here if that is less than a million and that's measured in bytes so in other words if it's less than one megabyte then proceed to the left and we don't do anything but if it's larger than a million then stop the flow and tell the API that the attachment size cannot exceed one megabyte alright so this is very cool and I'm very much looking forward to this this is the first time that I'm trying this by the way I haven't I promise you I haven't tested this before so flow I'm really putting a lot of confidence here at this stage so we're gonna go and say var attachment size so that's what we want to check and then this is all very similar and very straightforward so if that's less than a million then we want to do the following thing so let's move these actions across so I can just um, should be able to just move these things. Yep, that works. Look at that. Alright, so I can now safely go and delete that and let's just go and rename this to check attachment size. Alright, so there's my new condition and theoretically this should still work exactly the way that it did. So Let's go and save that, make sure there's no errors or issues. And it seems happy with life. Okay, let's go back. And let's go and open up Postman, attach a file, which we have, make sure that's the right. Let's hit the send button and see what happens. Okay, this is a file less than a meg, so theoretically uh, it should accept that. There shouldn't be any issues and it says file uploaded so let's refresh this over here 
and there we go so okay that's very cool it went through the right path it did the right comparison so sure working well very happy with that right so let's go and now we essentially had or we have what we had so let's go and add some additional things so what we're going to do now is in addition to the file we're actually going to send a small little API key to flow as well so let's say for an example you want to make sure that whoever is connected to this API is authorized to do so you could build in a header parameter that um, actually just checks that so let's just go and do that quickly so let's go into f uh, postman we say we're now going to send an API key as well and the API key is one two three okay I um, just want to show you what this is doing so I'm going to send it as it is and that's going to upload the file file uploaded so the API key at this stage doesn't really affect the flow um, even though it got it flow received the API key but it's not doing anything with it so if we go into the request and we then scroll down to API key you can see that this is not actually visible in the headers of the HTTP request alright so what we're going to do now is use our new functionality in the condition to not only check the file size but to also check the API key alright so let's go and see what we need to do here so we can either add a row which we're going to do in this case or we can add an entire group so if we do add a row um, it's basically going to say if that is is true or in other words if the statements return true and this one returns true then kick off the, the yes leg or the no leg so in this case this will work fine but what you could do as well is add an entire new group and then you can have another row of nested logic where you can have another and or all and then specify additional rules to say that if this is true or if this is true and so on and so forth and it just builds it up into the high level tree of ands so it will then say if that is true and that is true and that is true but this one might be split into multiple ors alright so for now let's just remove this and what we want to do now is go and check what that API key is so let's actually just go and do a variable okay so we're going to initialize a variable and we're going to call this init var API key and a variable name is var API key it's a string value well in this case it's a number but doesn't matter I keep that string because the header is going to be in a string and now we're going to need to go and fetch that so um, you'll okay, there's nothing under dynamics or the dynamic section so we need to actually write an expression to tell flow to go and look at that parameter so it's going to connect to trigger outputs we're going to connect to the headers and then we're going to look for the API key um, property in the header parameter so there we've got that and now we can go and say actually this is not telling the truth we'll just say rename and that is just check um, validation because we can now build in multiple rules in here alright so they'll be saying if var API key is equal to so now we just need to think about this for a second so we want to say that if the attachment is less than a million then it goes to yes so we're looking for a true uh, so we need to say if the var api key is equal to and then we can just go and say one two three in this case then it should also do yes so otherwise it should do no so if one of these two returns false then it's going to go to the no section and it's going to kick and scream at the API that's making the connection so over here let's just change this body cannot exceed um, and you need to specify a correct API key alright so in this case you, you would typically go and work on this message a bit but for now just to test this let's see what this does 
and it's going to Postman. I did that save. It's still saving. It finished saving. Let's open up Postman and send it an API key. Let's still first try and break it. So let's send it one, two, four. Nice. So there tells me that it is what that error that we gave. And now let's give it a th the correct API key. Ooh. Okay. So let's go and check what happened there live demos all right so let's see what the API key is one two three and that's fine it is a string um, I don't know what that is doing though if API key I wonder I wonder if that's maybe tick picking it up as a number. So, Okay, so the problem there was that it, even though I told it that it's text, it somehow tried to be clever and it then tried, or it then converted that to a number. So the moment I put a T in the value, it automatically picked up that it's a string and then, so, okay, so that works well. And if we go back into that new flow run, you'll see that that worked well. Fantastic. So that's working exactly as we want now after we sent it some text. Right, so the next thing that uh, the guys at Flow did was give us a peak function. And this is awesome. This is really fantastic. I also just noticed that this morning. But essentially, if we go and have a look at this check over here. Um, all right, so there's a new thing over there. This one is grayed out. So it says peak code. If you click on that, it says the operation cannot be picked. Okay, so that's a private operation, I'm sure. But let's have a look at this in Advar attachment, then the next one. You can actually click on that and then click on P code. And what this does is it actually gives you access to the back end JSON that makes out this component of the flow. And this is wonderful because in our earlier videos, in video one of this series, we spoke about how on the front end, I wonder if that's still doing it. Yes, on the front end, you'll see that it tells you that it's tri trigger multipart body. Uh, but that is not correct because you need to do a base64 to binary conversion for this flow. If that's confusing, um, go and have a look at the first video. And, and that's really confusing, but just go and have a look at that. But essentially over here, um, the moment I go and say, base 64 to binary and I put that whole thing in brackets the moment I click on update it says base 64 to binary so that's good and cool but if we now close this flow and open it up again and I go back into that variable, you'll see that it removed that base64 to binary. So that we discussed in the first video of this uh, files, or smiles with files and flow series. But essentially what you can now do is to actually go and see what it's, what that formula looks like or that expression looks like in the back end or in this actual configuration for flow, you can click on peak and that'll give you a quick view of the actual JSON that makes flow run. So here we can see that base64 to binary expression that we added earlier is actually still there. So that's why it's still working, which is beautiful. It's just not showing the poor administrator or the poor guy on the front end that it is still there, and then you don't know what's going on. All right, so that's the, the new peak function in flow as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, your flow absolutely 
top stuff from Microsoft. Thank you so much, guys. These are absolutely groundbreakers. We're looking forward to going clean up some flows, which uh, the new condition um, action will now definitely give us the ability to do. So thank you very much, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.